howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? My garden, it is chilly out. I need a jacket. What is this weather? <laughs> but since it's chilly, let's even say a bit cold, it only makes sense that we get our cold weather crops going. So whether you're thinking about getting some seeds going for your fall vegetable garden or your winter vegetable garden, come join me or as always, if you just want to hang out. We're starting seeds today. <laughs> so I figured I'd take advantage of the cooler weather and get out in the garden and start getting just like stuff in the ground. You know, cause we just, cause we're a little bit behind from where I had originally planned to be at, but you know what, life is lifing. But we got our beds filled. We had gotten some of our fall vegetable crops. They're, they're going, they didn't die. Everyone seems to be bouncing back in general. So soon we will start, you know, snipping and thinning, but not yet. We're gonna give them a little bit more time to see who's strong enough to survive and who just needs to go. So what I'm thinking, okay. So if you guys remember in our handy dandy garden planner, we, we had this plan for our fall. Well, it's not like our fall garden because when I look at the data about, <laughs> you know, me, look at the data of like, what crops are going to be in and like how long it takes to harvest and then when stuff comes back out and like when things need to be reseeded like this is gonna be the general plan at least into like early spring and then you know we can go figure out later so this is what i'm going to be working against today is we're going to do a lot of um seeding in place because things like onions green onions uh beets do really well beets especially do better being seeded exactly wherever they're gonna go lettuces you can transplant but i have in the past just like seeded directly in an area though i think it was last year i did it really badly or it was the year before and i just like spread them all over the bed it was, i'll explain you what i did and why you shouldn't do it <laughs> and then you can make your own choices so we're gonna work against this plan in general and then I'm thinking we probably will start a couple trays, especially of like the broccolis. I'm gonna seed in place for broccolis, but I'm thinking I'm also gonna start some trays for it because just in case some, some peoples don't wanna pop up, you know? So that's what I'm thinking we're gonna work on today. What do you think? Sounds good? Okay, let's go do that. So I've got my, I got my little seeds all here, all the different types, you know, it's got my warm weather crops plus my cold weather crops in here. So we'll just kind of work through. I have a lot yeah let's just get going so let's go pick out our first bet well actually you know what let me go move those really bad fall starts out of the way because we haven't planted them yet but they're it's coming that's like it's on my to-do list i've been very good about my to-do list this month so what i'm thinking today that we're going to plant is when i was looking at my my handy dandy list of what i need to propagate and plant right now is i really need to focus on getting the lettuce done, the broccoli, the beets, the green onions and onions, the carrots I can't get done right now just because those I'm thinking are gonna go in the front beds. And so we'll do, we'll seed those once I get those front beds filled. Um, I'm checking my list because I'm really bad sometimes about remembering everything that I need to do. But yeah, so that's what we'll focus on today is like either seeding direct in place or propagating. Okay, so let's go work on that snag all my little guys here. I've been doing better about keeping them watered because what I do is I fill these pails with water and these little sixers do great at just being like set in them. So they're surviving. They're not necessarily all thriving, definitely not thriving, but they're alive. And, I, and my plan is, is this coming week, these will all be in the ground. So you guys will see in the video, but not this one. Let's get these guys out of the way so that we've got space. Peppers don't look terrible. I mean, look at that. Let's take a look at the plant. So we are on this bed. Yes, yeah, so this is gonna be a, from what I drew out, we're gonna have lettuces on this inner side. Then we'll have, oh, it's this bed, right? So <laughs> I'm kidding myself. I made a little north mark so I knew which way is which. So based on this, what I think I need to do is, okay, so I need to do a row of lettuce, a row of beets, and I think I, the way I wrote it is I have two rows of onions. I think that's because I looked at the spacing guidelines. It's been a minute since I drew this. And then it's the same thing on this side. So we need to do lettuces, beets, onions. So that's kind of the idea. Lettuces on the inside, beets in the middle, onions on the outside. The reason I thought about putting onions on the outside is really because um, Locks, lot, wildlife doesn't tend to like onion <laughs> type stuff. So, you know, if you kind of put it on the perimeter, my thought is, is like keep them away from things like the lettuces. But I don't know that the butterflies really care and the moths. Fun tip, 
you know, someone brought it up and it's something I have theorized about, you know, cause if you think about a lot of the things that eat your veggies, um, they tend to be like moths and butterfly caterpillars. And especially like when you look at like lettuces, cause that's what we're going to be planting today is it, they're, they're types of moths. And we have not gotten the level of pest activity on stuff, except for when the plants are super stressed out, as I hear about from other people in our Wild Floridian group. And one of the things that someone had said when I was talking about turning off lights for birds, they're like, yeah, there's a benefit for, you know, turning off for birds, for migrating, plus there's benefits for moths, you know, not being attracted to those lights. But one of the things I have thought about and wondered, and I would love to hear from more, and I thought this person was so spot on, is we turn off all our perimeter lights at night. And that could be why we have less moths attracted to our beds. So I don't know that for sure. I know moths are attracted to it, but is it possible that if your veggie beds are near where you have light sources at night, is it possible you're causing some of your own problems? I don't know. Love to hear your guys' thoughts. But what I was doing while we're talking, I was looking up my spacing guidelines and kind of my days to harvest. So we're gonna be doing lettuces first. This is in the 2024 planner. So um, is this new piece, but so I need to put my lettuces like six inches apart when I put the seeds and it takes about 90 days. So these are cut and come again lettuces. They're not head lettuces. So it'll potentially be a little bit faster depending on how quickly they get settled in. Now the question really is, I have so many varieties of seeds right now is which varieties are we going to do and are we going to match everything i think at a minimum what i'm thinking and i always love your guys thought is i'm going to match at least like this with itself so like each bed could have a different thing going on but all the places lettuces are in its own bed will match because otherwise it gets like really confusing you know um and i've got lots of choices you know i'm a big cut and come again person i don't like doing head lettuce because it just takes one little caterpillar getting in there and it's like a hot little mess. And then you're just like sitting there peeling stuff apart, trying to like get all their scat out. And scat is, um, that's for us butterfly growers. That's a nice way of saying uh, caterpillar poop. So I have some old butter crunch seeds and romaine seeds. These are both fairy Morris. So I'm, <laughs> you can't see that. So I might do use these up just because like I have them. Um, but I don't want to just like waste the space. So I have also gotten Cosmo. This one is like a 55 days to harvest and that's a Romaine. I like to have a mix of Romaine and Buttercrunch. So I also have like Sweet Valentine. These are supposed to be, I think little smaller ones. Yes, oh, and they're sweet. Oh, who, who doesn't love a sweet lettuce? And then of course we've got the, oh, and then we've got Buttercrunch. How many days is this one? Do, 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 I'm looking. They're saying final plant spacing. So we got some butter crunch. We got some sweet Valentine. We got some Cosmo. And I'm thinking like for spacing based on how I've seen them, these ones can be, what's going behind this? We said beets. So based on how the beets are gonna get, you know, when you, when you see them, they say they can go three inches and then you thin. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put multiple, just like, and I'm just gonna go like boop, 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 boop. So they're in the little spots and then we can thin from that, those spots instead of doing like a whole trench row. And then it's like, not gonna have as cute spacing. Does that make sense? This is like a cuteness factor, okay? I'm owning it. It's not, <laughs> look, when it's your garden, when it's your yard garden, like you can, I'm not going for farming. This isn't that kind of, we're not that. We're, we're, there's, aesthetics matters to me <laughs> so we love a butter crunch what do we think romaine butter crunch so i've got three types let me see if i have a fourth type because maybe if we have a four types we'll do like one bed one bed one bed to keep ourselves organized is that like you too that you want to like i mix stuff up and then later on i'm like i don't know what i did and of course i always am losing all my like <laughs> stuff so let me see, I'm pretty sure I had maybe in one more. Those are broccolis. Those are the fairy moors packets that are pretty old. That's broccoli, that should be up here. You can see, I don't have like a complicated seed holding system. Let's see, this is out, oh, outrageous. Oh, this is supposed to be like a red one. And I think the Sweet Valentine might, looks like based on the picture, it's supposed to also be red. So it's gonna be fun. But we really like butter crunch. I feel like there should be more butter crunch than there should be romaine. Oh my, oh me, oh my, oh me, oh my. I feel like I should do two beds of butter crunch. 
But you know what? If we do the spacing right in here, I think we're gonna end up with like four, eight heads. Eight heads is quite a bit. So let me look at my spacing. I think we're gonna end up with eight heads. So I might not need to worry too much. Yeah, I'm thinking eight per bed. So eight's a lot. It's a lot of romaine, but you know what my dad loves? Ro he loves Caesar salad. So if I have extra, I'll give it to him. This is like, he, he likes getting stuff from our garden, but he doesn't want to do any, well, he lives in a car though. You know what I'm saying. Okay, let's go. Let's, let's go put some stuff in. So we're going to do four. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, what do we think? I'm thinking we're going to do, let's turn around. Figure. So we have our four packets. We know this one and this one probably have red tones. So I'm gonna probably put these across from each other and then the green. So we'll have like red and red or we'll have green and green or green and green and red and red. I think that's, that would be the cutest way to do it. So let's see. Now we like butter crunch the best. So I would probably put that in this bed. So we'll do butter crunch here. And if we're gonna do green here, we should do green there, which means romaine goes there. We will, sweet Valentine, hmm versus outrageous. I would love to know. I know some of you guys said that you guys have done outrageous before, or maybe you just knew that <laughs> it's called outrageous because it's red. But I think what we're gonna do is we might do, let's do Sweet Valentine here and we'll do outrageous there. Okay, so we've got a game plan. Let's go put these in the ground. Yep, and let's just double check how deep, let's see, eighth of an inch to a quarter inch. It, this is gonna be so like, you know, absolutely shallow. Um, I would say a quarter inch is probably even, yes, six to 12 inches, final row spacing, 12 inches to the next row so that you don't step on stuff. Days to emerge, oh, a week or two. And the temperature, we are, even with this weird cold snap, we are so gonna be in the range for these. So, yay! And I think all these are pretty similar. Yes, they are. Got basically the same instructions, so we are good to go. Let's go put some lettuce in the ground. I got my handy dandy shovel. I like these transplanting shovels that have the measurements on them. Can you see this on here? Yeah, so I like the ones that have the measurements, um, not because we're gonna use them so much for depth today, but more for spacing apart so we can get kind of an idea. So to this point, to this point, it's about four inches, you know, and a thumb is about the, the first to your knuckles about another inch. So I can say that this is about five, five and a half. So if I kind of use this, this is about six inches apart, which is the spacing that we need. So we want to try to get four of these in here, but we need to get some spacing from little pepper guy, little pepper guy, right? So we might just evenly space them with a little bit more of like a lean. Does that make sense? A lean, but we want to like prefer this side versus closer to the pepper with our six inches. And then we'll see once we put these in, like, is there like room for a fifth one? But honestly, I'm okay without putting a fifth one in because we're gonna end up with eight times, is that right? Eight times four, right? That's a lot, 32 heads of lettuce that we're cutting come again. Last year we had not 32, we had a lot less than that. So I feel like we're gonna have so much lettuce, so much lettuce. And the nice thing with is how quickly these turn around. If stuff fails, like we are at the beginning of the cold crop season, so we can always plant again. So I'm gonna wanna come in like, you know, not too crazy from the edge, but cause they don't get too big. I think right about here, this far in to the bed will be good. Especially if beets, beets are gonna come in middle beets and broccolis. So I think that gives some space on either side. Oh, you can't see that. But like basically, if I consider this the middle for broccolis or beets, no matter which bed it is, if I come to here, that's probably the broccoli. So the lettuce can kind of hang out here. And those broccolis are gonna be really small for a lot of the season. So we got one spacing, two spacing, three spacing. Oh yeah, that looks, that looks, that looks pretty decent. Okay, so those are gonna be our four holes. They are way too deep. Uh, if you notice, I was like <laughs> this, this like honestly with lettuces, like you almost just wanna like, just, just dust it back. I'll take you in closer as we do this so you can see what I'm doing because this is a mistake I made for a really long time. So what I'll do is right as I get ready to place the seeds, I'm going to like just, fill this back up, but just so I can kind of remember where the holes are supposed to go. <laughs> oh my goodness, this will be crazy. Okay, so which one did we say? We said butter crunch. So let's grab our, let's snag our butter crunches. 
I've been being way better than I used to be. I used to just like tear these open, but now I take advantage of the fact that they're resealable. Oh my goodness, there are seeds ready to get, get run away. I have seeds popping up outside of my plant, guys. Don't have that. So I'm gonna make it like a little dimple right now. And then we will put a few seeds in. Usually like you only need to put like, I don't know, a couple, but honestly, we're gonna put a little bit more. These are ridiculously tiny seeds. That's why you actually need to go really shallow. That's why I say like, I don't know, a quarter of an inch, an eighth of an inch is like, seems super deep. Just think of it as like dusting it. Put four or five seeds in. But these little guys are so tiny. And there's like, can you imagine this teeny, tiny itty bitty plant that's gonna pop up, trying to push that out of the way? It's not gonna happen. It's gonna just be like, Whoa! So really shallow. So I'm just filling my little hole back in. And now I'm sprinkling like four seeds, five seeds in. And I'm just gently dusting back on top. Come closer. So you can see this hole. Can you see this hole? This is how deep it is right now. Way too deep. So we're gonna bring it back in. Just a gentle, gentle little dimple right here. And then I'm gonna take all these little seeds, little guys, and we're just gonna put them in the little hole. And we're just gonna brush a little bit of light soil over it. And that is the last of the seeds. That might have been a little deep. We'll close up. Oh, no, wait, we got four. No, 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 we got four more to do. <laughs> oh my, the sun has come out and now it's like, <laughs> what temperature is this? Uh, Florida. You gave me a cold snap. And then you're just like, yeah, but we're going back to 70. <laughs> That's okay. I got flip flops on like a true Floridian. So whatever. Let me go throw this down. Line. And there. And then we go four. And we still have a ton of seeds left. A little, put a little, put a little, and put a little. All right, and we're gonna take all our extra seeds and try to get them all back in the packet so that they don't become <gasps> fall. They don't become like little weeds hanging out. And boom, closing it back up. And I'm just gonna leave this here for now and then I'll make a note of who goes where. So we need to update our plan because I mean, I feel like I'm not the only one with this, but how notorious is it for us gardeners? We switch up our plan or we make an adjustment and then boom, now it's three months later and it's like, I don't remember what variety it is. You, because definitely me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a note in my planner of which lettuces I place where. Plus I'm gonna update it with the changes from the last time we were here so I didn't capture those. So let's go do that now. So we know now that these are no longer carrots. They are strawberries. So that is, and I'm gonna um, note the variety because y'all are gonna ask me later and I'm gonna be like, I don't remember, it's Albion. So their Albion strawberries are there. I might still do the basil, so I'm not taking that out. Um, and I just know that there's dino kale. I need to switch these from B's to C's for Cubanelle because these are now all Cubanelle peppers. The jalapeno, the J. So what I did is I made like a little key down here for when I had to shorthand um, so that later, so I didn't have to try to write jalapeno into these little tiny boxes. So I just put J pepper um, and then I just made a note that the J stood for jalapeno. So now I know these are Cubanelles. These are gonna be Cubanelles. 
here. And then these are now, we're gonna put an A for aji dulce, AKA what I call ahise uh, peppers. So we're just gonna turn that C into an A. And we're just gonna make a note that A is going to be for ahi dulce pepper. We already got dino kale noted. And then what did I put where? Okay, so I'm sitting at this bed. So we're just gonna put a note up here. It's gonna say outrageous. How do you spell that? <laughs> and it is a romaine type. So I'm gonna put outrageous romaine here on that one. This one was then a sweet valentine, right? Which is also romaine. This one was the, what was it? Cosmo romaine. And then this was butter crunch. So now I've got noted all my varieties. So now we can start working on the other pieces. This one I'm gonna just put like a, oh, cause we did Waltham, the Chico Waltham. It's really weird, but whatever. It's what I did. So we're gonna go with it. Um, so now let's go put the beets in, in the beets beds, which would be that bed and the bed right behind me. Those will get the beets in it. So let's, let's go do beats. Woo. Oh wait, let's check. So this is my 2023, <laughs> but let me grab my 2024 so I can just double check my beat spacing. Let's see, where's my little, I've got little tabbies everywhere. So let's see, beats, six inches. This is one of those ones again, where you can plant them a little bit closer and then um, thin them out and you can use them for like greens for smoothies. So boom. Okay, so we got that. So we got our spacing, which is about three to six inches apart. Um, I'm gonna probably stick with the six inches and we'll just kind of like densely plant. Or should I do them in threes? Or should I just do a trench? Cause I can then just thin them. Cause I feel like beets, I've grown them before, but I feel like they're not like, but you know, if I pick a spacing, yeah, maybe if I just pick a spacing, then when I see an area doesn't pop up and then I have like some too close and some too far, cause that's what always happens to me. Does that happen to you? You like do like a trench and then like three come up over in this area, but then nothing comes up in this stretch. And now you're like, well, I'm gonna thin one area, but I'm gonna, yeah. So I'm just gonna pick the spacing. We're gonna use Detroit dark red from Southern Exposure. And we're gonna just do in the middle, if you saw on the plan, we're gonna do rows in the middle. So that way we have lettuce and then we got these beet greens coming up. That's why we love beets is because it's a win-win plant. And we use the beet greens sometimes as spinach substitutes for our smoothie in the morning. So if you're thinking about that, um, something to consider. But before we start that, I need to go grab all the seed packets because it's getting a little breezy and they are very, very light. <laughs> so let me go get those and put them away. So we're gonna stick to our original plan of this bed being a beet bed and then the one diagonal to it is gonna be a beet bed. You can see I already kind of, I don't know if you guys can see this, there's like a line I drew down the middle because I was trying to, as I figured out lettuce spacing, I was trying to make sure I was very clear about my midpoint <laughs> so that even if I'm like, oh, these need to come in from the edge, I don't go so far that this has to go back here and then this stuff's all crowded out. So I was just like, okay, here's your midline and then your lettuces need to be kind of here. Um, I maybe even should have done, but you know what, we literally we learn. It's always can move stuff around. So beets are gonna go where these rows are and then I'm gonna do them every, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna push them a little bit um, and we'll see, we'll see how this all goes. Cause if you remember, one of the reasons we're up in the beets, one spinach substitute for us and two, we that beet hummus at Disney at Epcot at the Morocco Pavilion, was so good. I would love to have a beet hummus again. That was just like, oh. Also Ben loves beet salad, so, you know. I enjoy beet salads, but like he like loves beet salads. So let's get some beets in the ground. Now, when we look at the instructions for this one, you can see it can handle even cooler temperatures, um, but it can handle really warm temperatures, which is great since I'm zone 10A. Um, half an inch sowing depth. And you'll see that these seeds are a lot bigger, so it makes sense. It's gonna take, it's saying two to four inches per, so we can really, okay, so six inches for this variety, we can push it. And then we want the rows to be 12 to 18 inches apart. They're about, I don't know, a good six inches from this, but 
These, because they're gonna be cut and come again lettuces, they'll stay pretty, they stay more upright for me. Um, full sun, days to emerge. Hopefully in like a week, we start seeing little guys popping up. Are we th second guessing? Should we just do them as a trench? Ah, where'd it go? I see you. I know you were trying to run away on me, huh? <sighs> you know what? Maybe we'll just do trench method. Okay. I'm okay. Are you okay with it? Can we change plans? We'll just see how many we can get. Stop trying to be in the lettuce area, Mr. Beats. <laughs> so let's put a bunch of these. I remember I saw a video a long time ago. Was it like MI Gardener? He was testing out putting uh, beets, like clumping versus thinned. Who was better? Who was not better? What has been your guys' experience in Florida? Or if you live in one of those other subtropical, like my Southern Texas, my South California, my Arizona's. I know you all there, my Caribbean's. I know you're here hanging out with us too. So what have you guys found? Is it similar to what they're seeing in the north? Like, can you let them clump? I just did one little doodah. You know what, we're gonna just come back in? Mm. All right, cause I got actually two packets this year. So that I've got plenty for what we're gonna be doing here. And I always love like carrot packets, lettuce packets. You get so many, like who's worried? Let's, let's, I'm gonna help shove them in the ground because I didn't dig this trench deep enough. I'll also do that for the next row. Now, sometimes we think about like plants that like to be seeded in place versus not in place. Beets is supposed to be one of those ones. Anything that I feel like has like a, a bulb tuber situation seems to tend to like, you know, like carrots, it's a root crop, you know, onions. Even though you can transplant onions, I always fine unless I buy starts like mm, I don't know about that so definitely carrots lettuce onions oh, you can start lettuces too but they're just they're so they have such tiny roots I just feel like they can get super fussy on you so I like just to plant in place as much as I can also because let's be real let's be real this is a tip because it has to be one way it's because I hate doing container plants <laughs> And I'm so bad at fussing and I feel like veggies are the most fun to see and I feel like when they're in little trays they are the most fussy plant to deal with so let's be real I'm like seeding in place because I don't want to deal with fussy trays if you don't want to deal with fussy trays seed in place if you want to deal with fussy trays you are more than welcome to there's nothing wrong with it uh, though you shouldn't do like carrots <laughs> that's the big thing uh, beets I don't think you should either um, but everything else like you can technically but do you want to Let's go put more beets in the ground. Dee, 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 dee. I think the question is like, how are your cold weather crops going right now? Did you have a good start? Have you had a restart? Or like me and you just neglected them? Or did you have projects you needed to do before you started working on it? I'm always fascinated to know other, what everybody else is doing because we're all on our own little journeys, but there's similarities and there's differences and we can help each other on our journey figure out what works best for us. Let's, see, let's keep going. Okay. I'm gonna cover you up. Beep, go in the ground. They look like funny little tiny pebbles, I feel like. Do you feel like that with beep? Like, look at that. I feel like they're like little tiny pebbles. <laughs> Who's doing radishes? <laughs> I am not doing radishes. I will tell you the only reason I would like to do radishes again, because Ben was like, no way for eating them, is I thought those flowers were gorgeous. They had pale blue flowers, but just that alone. I was like, you know what? I would grow radishes just for the flowering. Not necessarily for any of the food. Now the big thing is, is that you want to get make sure to give spacing for other crops, like these little peppers. Because my Cubanelles, they are doing really good. They definitely have some pest activity because they got so stressed because I took forever to put them in the ground. But you know what? They're already looking happier than they were because they were going through seasons of being underwater and overwater. They were getting like that pale yellow look, but they just by color alone from having them in the ground for not quite a week even yet, they have definitely like everybody's 
green is looking good. I feel like that's one of the ways I can tell like how stressed plant is. I just look at the color green that they are. And like when you see certain shades of green, I feel like it's just your eye gets trained to it. But like I can see this newer growth is this nice, it's a bright green, but it has a richness to it. It's not like as yellowy as like maybe this leaf is. This leaf right here shows. It's like, got a, I don't know if you guys can see how pale yellow that is compared to these middle ones, but they've perked back up in color quite a bit. And they also look like a vibrant color. The ones that are still in the trays kind of have like this dim look going on. So I am excited that just by getting them in the crown, they're already happier. And I might not have to start really any more peppers. And anyways, I think I'm gonna hold, I'll give them like a little good month or two. And then like maybe in January, I'll restart if I really, really have to. So beets, we are done on beets. So next up is broccoli. And we've got two types that we had started for over there. Now, I think I just started them too early. Honestly, my area, I'm a zone 10, I'm central Florida, but I'm zone 10A. And I know there's a bunch of us like this, right? We're technically, like if you look at the state of north, central, south, like we're on the central, but because we're on the coastal areas, we're zone 10A. And zone 10 is more like south Florida. So what I'm doing right now, I was talking about this with Katrina, you know, cause she was saying that sometimes she's more like central Florida, but then in like certain months, she's more like North Florida. I was like, you know what? I'm going to test myself, my area more against trying to do some things like South Florida and see, because I think some ways I act like central Florida, like in the summertime, I feel like we are way more like central Florida, but in the winter, I think we act a bit more like South Florida, which is why I can get away with starting things like this a lot later and we're okay. Plus the microclimate in my climate, in my, even in my neighborhood, it's like a, it's a, it's a different thing because like people who have no trees on like the edge of the neighborhood, they'll get frost on their grass. And I'm not just my yard, but all the areas like in this, in, like where I live in the neighborhood, I it's, don't see frost on people's grasses. And I think it's because we have so many oaks and pines and stuff creating a nice microclimate. So interesting fun fact. But I think the broccoli's, long story short, I think I started my broccoli's too early for what was happening in my area. Um, and I just didn't get a lot popping up. So we're gonna go start some more. So this bed was beets, that bed was beets, but that one and that one, they are broccoli. And because of how, I, what starts I did have, which was two wall thumbs and one to Chico, I think I'm gonna just kind of follow that pattern. Let me take you over there and let's talk more. Here are my three fall starts. This one looks great. It has like a very woody stem. Don't know what's going on with it, but it's it looks very happy since we got it. And this one's a Waltham 29. So it's this type from Southern Exposure. This one's a DeChico. Let me see. This leaf just got stabbed by a pine needle. So I think that's why that's droopy, but otherwise it also looks very happy right there. I might need to stake these once they actually get some size. And then this one is a Waltham. Oh, and if you're wondering, the Chico, that's, that is what that middle one is. So what I'm thinking is, is when we look at this part of the bed and then we gotta do that bed, that I might kind of do a similar pattern thing. And we're just, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of a thing, but here's what I'm thinking. So let's flip to back to our plan. I use my pen this time to hold my spot. But if we look here on the plan with the broccoli, we only can get about three broccolis in because for spacing, I won't flip to the other one, but you know, you're 12 to 24 inches. And if you look at these there, I don't know, that one's, that's definitely a foot. That one's probably a little on the tight side, but that's fine. But we can basically with the spacing I've got, oops, um, in the bed is I basically got three, four feet. And remember, you got to get some clearance before we get to these plants. So I need to put in three broccoli. So what I'm thinking is, is here I did a Waltham to Chico Waltham. So I'll do the same thing, Waltham to Chico Waltham. And then in this bed, I'll reverse it. I'll do to Chico Waltham to Chico. And then I'll end up with an even amount of Walthams and to Chico's. So that's fine. And yeah, so let's take a look at what it says. Let's flip to the backs. How similar and different are they? So same temperatures, we are 
and a good point. See, this is why I think we were a little on the high end because when I started the seeds, we were still hitting 90s, but now we are definitely in this great range. Though I don't think our soil temp was necessarily 90, but it would it was stressful time with everybody here. Then quarter inch depth, we can do that. 12, 24 inches, yep. And then this row spacing is more like this row versus this row. So they have clearance to move through, but because we're in a raised bed, I can definitely do these way closer. And then full sun, days to emerge, four to 10. We will take that. So let's go put some in right here. Our line in the middle that I had already marked. So we can kind of go and work our way from like halfway of that line. Cause this is basically like the end of the, I'll call it the pepper zone for these jalapenos, jalapeno, jalapeno. So if I work off that, then our center is about here. Let's put like a line right here. And then I can do equal distance from that. If you want like an easy, your forearm is about a foot. So you gotta go from wrist to elbow. So if you want like a rough marking, which would mean we should come right about here. And then if we come the other way, about here, which yes, means those ones were probably spaced way too close, but you know what? We live, we learn, it's fine. <laughs> you know it's fine and i'm guessing something's not going to make it through this whole winter time so we're just going to do the best we can so let's go put some seeds in so we said waltham to chico waltham so let's grab some walthams and i'm going to put a little bit of extra seeds in these because since i'm not doing a tray where you know i'm over planting we want to make sure we have enough seeds to get something to get going so this is what they're going to look like the little balls if you've never seen them before. No, oh no, oh no. There's like a whole bunch right here. I'm gonna have to try to clean that up because I don't want like a bunch of <laughs> broccoli starting. So let's just get some right here and I'm gonna put some right here. Oh my goodness. Well, we can't really grab those. Oh, cause we don't want soil that's damp inside this packet. So you know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna, we're just gonna bury it. That's sad, but okay. There's still an insane amount of seeds left. And now we're gonna put just a tiny bit of Tachico at our quarter inch depth. Let's see, yeah, I am putting like an egregious amount per hole, but it's because I wanna make sure something comes up right here. And we have so many left over and we do not need that many broccolis for us. And the reason I say that is because we're gonna end up with 12 broccoli plants. And when I had bought a six pack, if you go back in our videos years ago, I did a six pack in a bed up front and having just six broccoli heads was plenty because it's not just this broccoli head you get, it starts putting little little guys out, like little florets. So, um, which I think is nice because it's like, bam, your broccoli heads cut up for you. <laughs> And what we do to kind of help that harvest along is we just freeze a lot of it because we use frozen broccoli regularly, even buying it from the store. So the more I can get that we can just freeze, hooray. And so this year I'm thinking we're just going to do 12 and that's probably plenty. The fantastic thing is, is we live, we learn, we'll take notes and then next year we might adjust. So now we're going to do this bed. We're going to reverse it. We're going to do two the Chico's on either end and we'll do Waltham in the middle and bing, bing, boom, we'll have six of each. That way I can get to try each of them because the ones I did before were Lieutenant, which is the ones that you can pick up usually at like Home Depot and Lowe's. I don't know. Other people said they grew Lieutenant, had no problems with flavor. Ours just was like funky. So maybe you had to do something like in the soil, but it was like the funkiest broccoli I've ever had. Every time we harvested it. If it was cooked, it was fine, but if it was raw, no, no good. So we're gonna give these ones a try and hopefully, yay, yay, yay. Time we will close this <laughs> so it doesn't get everybody. Let's put away our broccolis so that we have 
them for later in case we need to do some reseeding. Cause it's not unusual, you know, to reseed plants. Like that doesn't necessarily reflect anything about you. So something I learned over time is like, <laughs> Sometimes just see because the way they were packed and stuff, like they just don't want to come up. And so it is what it is and you're okay. So just kind of keep it moving. Uh, I guess that's how I say it. My little... This is all the varieties I'm using this year. <laughs> so I kept them in one little bin. I have tons of other packets, but I was just like, you know what? That way if I need to reseed, I'm not like, where are they? I can just be like, here they are. And now what I want to do is I want to update what's going where so that we're not like later on like, which head is this? Because I always find if I put labels in here, they go missing, especially once we hit like windy, rainy season. Somehow they just like, they make their way out and they start traveling around the garden. Me, you, you, me, like that's what happens to me. So I rather label it in the planner and then that way <laughs> I know what's what. In theory, that's gonna work great, right? So we're gonna put a C. W for Waltham, a DC for DeChico, W for Waltham. Same thing here, we'll do DC, W, DC, DC, W, DC. And we cannot forget to put it on here so that we can figure out what the heck we meant later on, because months from now, right? We're gonna sit here and be like, I don't know. I put an H. Oh, my Italian ancestors are gonna be like, what's wrong with you? And then, <laughs> and these are Waltham. I'll put the 29 just so I have it. Okay, so now we know what's what. And now in order to finish this design, we gotta do onions and green onions. So let's go do, what do you think? think green onions first. Let's do green onions first. So green onions, you can smush these guys together. Now, if you've been up for like, seed starting and you're just like I don't feel comfortable that's okay me neither for so long now I'm willing to try because I've had some success so sometimes you just got to get going um but you could just buy some from Publix I think I showed it before like you can just go check out this video here you can see that I just shoved some in the ground and then <laughs> and then I had plants and they grew for a really really long time so um I am going to use either my fairy morris onion bunching onions they're also called so green onions or bunching onions green onion just means like you're using the tops which we make a green onion soup is there anything that says it's different i bet you these are the same variety sometimes i've heard that sometimes these companies are using the same like suppliers just different packaging would not be surprised if someone who's worked in manufacturing and co-packers does not surprise me that there's one maker of something and then just different packages. It's not very unusual. Um, so we have these ones, we have these ones. Let's pick who we're gonna use. I bought a lot apparently of these uh, green onion varieties. <laughs> I was feeling very excited about those. White bunching, white spear onion bunching. I don't know if I wanna try these right now. So I think I'm just gonna stick to one of these and we're gonna go with, who do you think? Who do we wanna do? Wanna do Fairy Morris? Do we wanna do, we'll do the Fairy, let's do the Fairy Morris package. Let's have some funsies. Yeah, so we're gonna do Fairy Morris for the green onions that go in between. And the reason I'm doing that and I'm pushing it is because green onions are very compact. If you've ever grown like onions, they can get like with their greens get pretty big, but the green onions can stay pretty like, and if you're harvesting them, so I'm not too worried and if I have to, and if I have to, I can always pull the plant, take off the top and then replant them, you know? So if I'm not liking how tightly I've spaced things, which I might not. And then we're gonna do the early Texas onion, Texas grano, and this is a yellow sweet onion. Ooh, 90% germination, oh my, okay. So we're gonna put the extra packets back. So later when I'm looking, and now we're gonna do this. So let's take a look at the back, 50 to 95 degrees. So Texas, right? And then we've got depth quarter inch, spacing three to four inches. So very similar to our beets, rows 12 to 16 inches, hooray. I'm betting these are very similar. Quarter inch to half an inch, 10 to 12 days germination. 
and it's saying for Florida, January through April. But here's the great thing. University of Florida is hottest and your planner will tell you, you can plant them now. So let's go plant them now, even though it's not January through April. See, that's the problem. They're treating the tip of South Florida, the same as North Florida, the same as parts of Northern California. I'm sure they're the same zone, but like, even with Florida, everyone can tell you, South Florida is not the same as North Florida. Like you're talking about a tropical versus a semi-subtropical, whatever. Okay, so let's get planting, hooray. So let's get this little guy open. So we're gonna do four. We're gonna do one, two, three, four dots. And we will see if this was a good choice or a bad choice. I feel like Glenda, is it a good witch or is it a bad witch? Is it a good idea or is it a bad idea? So we're gonna again, just take a whole big heap and handful. So we wanna do, I'm gonna come more forward. So like in the design, in the planner, it said like to put it here, but we know this will be like one of the bushiest spots. So what we'll do is we'll actually come forward because they don't take up a lot of space. So we're gonna come like here, 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 here. So we're gonna come out. We're definitely not gonna go as deep as my finger went. <laughs> that would be a terrible idea. And here. And we're just gonna cover those little guys up. Boom. 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 Thumbs up. Let's keep going. Next up, we're gonna grab this. Now, in my drawing, I have put, let me show you guys really fast, is I actually put a lot of notation of like, do two rows. And this is because you can plant these three to four inches. And we use an incredible amount of onions. <laughs> it, when I've done, I don't know, have you guys ever done this? Like done a grocery analysis, like whether how much you harvest or how much you buy, like how, what's like, what's the thing you buy the most of? And every time I've looked at it, like, yes, we all talk about tomatoes and peppers and lettuces, but like, honestly, onions. Every dinner dish we make has onions in it. So the more we can, like, honestly, people ask me before, like, how much, how do you preserve it? Don't, we go through, every time I harvest, like, even though we'll get like pounds and pounds and pounds, we just blow through them so fast because we use onions a lot. So I have not had that problem to test and try because I have never gotten enough onions to come anywhere close to the amount of onions we use. So I'm gonna do two rows and all of that. So there's gonna be two rows, two rows. Basically the whole perimeter of this is gonna be onions. Hopefully I do a really good job with this because we use a lot of onions. <laughs> we use a lot and I could use a lot of onions. You can see here's the midline from the broccoli and the beets, depending on which bed it is. So what I'm thinking is we kind of come along with two lines like this. What's this garbage in so Just come along with two lines like this, about here. And all of this can be just a sprinkle of onions. So we'll come in. So this is the type, Texas Early Grano. what I wanted to get done today. And the big thing was I wanted to get all the seeds in here. I think the question is like, what seeds should I put starts in for? I think broccoli, but honestly, I think we're gonna hold just for a minute. 
because a lot of this stuff should be able to come up in a week, I feel like I can make a really good assessment in like one week from now and then decide, do I want to start doing some trays that I have to babysit all the time? So I'd rather put the energy into keeping this all watered, getting it going, and then see, you know? Does that make sense to you guys? Like see where I'm starting to have holes, like maybe some lettuces didn't come up and stuff like that. And then after maybe like two or three weeks, cause we'll still be in November at that point. You guys, you know, you know that there's always like a lag when you see this versus when I do it. So I think what we do is we keep these really well watered. We start getting everything popped up because honestly, when we look at this plan, we got the onions in, we got the broccoli in, the lettuces are in, the green onions are in, right? All the peppers are in, the dino kale's in, everything's in. Now it's like, are you gonna do what you're supposed to do? The strawberries are in. The only thing is basil, but like I'm not, we have a ton of dry basil from this previous season. So I don't need to like get basil, like I'm not worried about basil right now. So when I look at my list, it's like, okay, I got my dino kale. That's done. I got my jalapenos planted, cubanelles planted, ahisa, albions. I got broccolis planted. I did the 6th, 4th of July. So those are all done. We got lattice, broccoli, beets, green onions, onions. Haven't done carrots. Oh, you guys can't even see it. Haven't done carrots yet. I was thinking about doing a frog fruit project. Um, these all have to go up front still. Oh yeah, I guess I did fill a little Then I finished that. Still have to harvest that stuff. But, you know, we've made a lot of progress on this list. And for what I need to get done this week, you know, we're gonna put a note. Seed in place, cold crops. So that's done. So there we go. So we got what we needed to get done today. We got all our cold crops seeded in the back. I'm feeling really good about that. And if you're thinking you wanna go get some stuff done and you're not really sure, I would check out this video about 20 plus varieties. Um, this is all the different seed varieties that are <laughs> in here and how they fit into this plan, which of course changed a little bit. Or if you wanna learn more about green onions, check out this video here. And if you just enjoyed hanging out, go ahead and throw a like and a subscribe and ring the bell for more notifications. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.